Hello everyone, it's Denise at Something Beautiful Handcrafts and I'm down in the basement today and unfortunately I can't predict when the furnace comes on. I certainly can't tell when a thing is going to go off. So I just decided to go ahead and video because I'm kind of limited on time here. Okay, so this doll came in the mail yesterday and I was kind of busy so I didn't get to her but kind of anxious about her. And so I got her on eBay and I knew she was a hot mess when I got her. And, um, well, the pictures were really good. So, uh, n no problem at all. You know, when I get a TLC doll and the pictures say exactly what they say and the prices right were great. So I knew this one was going to be a TLC and you can see the back of her wig looks okay right until here. And the seller showed that perfectly fine on the photo. Okay, so she described this doll as being a truly me. And if you look at her and you see the part in her hair, you know this is not a truly me. This is actually Kanani. And so I am really feel really fortunate to have gotten her at this price. So Kanani has quite a few problems. Besides the fact that her wig is pretty much completely shot. Because there's nothing in between the rows back there. Um, she also is filthy. She's got several scrapes across her nose, one on the side of her cheek. She's got all this stuff in her eye. And I was wondering what it was. At first it looked like sugar. Then it occurred to me it is glitter nail polish that was put across the eye. That has started to flake because this eye was stuck at first. And that's why it's got the gooey glitter nail polish and what I did was use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get the nail polish off the eye and around the lid. But I have to be really careful because um, I didn't realize this is the hundred, this is the 91% rubbing alcohol and not the 70%. So I did get a little paint off, but that's nothing I can't fix. I would like to take the eyes out and just clean them and put them back in. But supposedly just molds are really hard to get the eyes out. And uh, with this tendonitis, getting the Sonali mold out was pretty hard. Now she's got like bunches and bunches of other marks. She is really quite dirty. Uh, her cloth body is very dirty. Markings on the legs. And some pink on the back. Now I'm going to take her apart. I'm going to pull this wig off. I'm going to scrub the cloth body. Uh, take the stuffing out. Probably throw it away. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Scrub these legs. And she's going to get like a real bath with like soap. Um, I, here's what I'm thinking about. When I got her, my intention was if I could get the auction low enough. I was just going to beg her and send her to American Girl so I could have the hospital experience, which I think would be kind of cool since I already have a Kanani. Um, but this is the nice golden Kanani. I really like the skin tone. But I would be curious to see what the other Kanani looks like. You know, I've seen videos and pictures, but those don't really show much of a difference. And supposedly it's a big difference. I don't know. But that would be neat to have a kind of a newish Kanani. In the meantime, though, because basically this hair is cut and it is very bald on the back and it is hard to match this wig. And I could get her another wig for 25 bucks. That'd be cool too. But I'm thinking what I want to do with this wig is I did buy this hair for the other Kanani. Never used it. What I'm thinking about is taking all the hair off of this wig. I'd be keeping a shirt. I don't know. It depends on how much I have. And just... For now, making Kanani a redhead. I don't know. I think she'd be pretty cool with the wig as a redhead. And then uh, later down the line, maybe I'll send her to the AG hospital. Oh, I think I like that. So that's probably what I'm going to do. All right. So along with Dirty Kanani came these clothes because she obviously thought she was a truly me. I can't tell you where the truly me outfit came from. But she also had these other outfits. So there must have been other dolls. And then um, 
I should have looked and saw what her other listings were. Must have been other dolls because there are other clothes here that have nothing to do with Truly Me or Kanani. This, according to my Facebook group, is Jess's Beach Mix and Match. That's pretty cool. I think I'll keep that. Um, some off-brand booty shorts, which I'm definitely not going to keep. <laughs> uh, this is, it was a school outfit from 2008, 2009, maybe. Something like that. I forgot exactly what it said. But there's the shirt and the jeans that go along with it. And there's not much more to this outfit. I think there's some boots. And so I might try to get the whole outfit because you know how I like those complete little outfits when I do get them. And uh, these are in really good shape. They're very crispy. She washed them and it looks like she ironed them. Or I don't know if they ever got used. But they came wrapped in tissue. This is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this girl. Take the head off and start the wash. Several hours later and here is the Kanani and as you can see her eyes do not close. And I've tried just about every trick in the book and they don't close. Um, I'm going to try to get them out. I don't know if that's going to be possible with my hand and wrist like this. And of course I've heard it's pretty hard with chest molds. So I'm thinking that I'm going to wind up sending her in. Uh, no matter what. And I guess if I'm trying to get the eyes out and I break the mold, <laughs> I still am going to send her in. So might as well give it a whirl. See what happens. I've tried all the air and all that kind of stuff. So that means something's going on. There's looks like there's so much glittery paint on the inside that these things are like stuck to the back probably. So maybe just the hot water will loosen them up. So we don't worry too much about that. Uh, look at this wig. It looked like it was super glued back on. It took a lot to get it off. Um, and I had to use acetone, so that's a first. Now, uh, as usual, I already started the process, but I will explain to you what's happening here. Okay, so this is the new hair on the new webs. Basically, all I did was I followed the line of the old wefts. Pretty simple. So this is, it's less like a restoration and more like a recreation, but not a complete recreation. So I'm somewhere in that gray area. I'm just following the tracks across. So this is how far up I am. I haven't replaced the short hairs yet. I want to, they give me a line to see where I'm at. So I'll replace them later. Maybe not at all. Most of the old hair I did pull off. Some of that left in. It makes for interesting highlights. And I'm going to save it because um, when I send this doll back in, I'm going to need as much of the original as possible. And I'll just put that all in the box with it. So I'm on my way up and across. Now, for most of this the wefts have gone completely across, but we're getting to the point now where uh, we're building the top of the hair, and so wefts go in different directions. Let me show you. Like, there's a space for this to go all the way across, then it folds, and oh, sorry, it folds and goes under over top of that. You can see the inside. I couldn't find any really dark brown thread, but you're not going to see this part, so it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to get to the crown here, where the tracks, the weft tracks don't go all the way across. They go, they start to overlap each other. Oh, here we go. It doesn't go all the way around in the spiral. It goes to about right here, and then there's a weft that comes backwards, that overlaps over it. And then what I did is I sectioned off the part. And normally what happens, the part is there are two tracks 
that are put together and seen so that when you open them up, you don't see the actual track part of the weft alongside there. And that's what closes. There we go. That's what closes it up. So when I get to that part, I'll show you. But basically, I am just putting them down where they obviously go. You can see the missing spaces where they go. Basically, this is how it works. Uh, this right here is a short track. The, the short weft pieces you see that cover up when you part the hair. And as it gets towards the side, there are some longer pieces here. So this is what I'm replacing. That go to the side and they're going to fold around to the back over here. So I've cleared this spot. And pretty much I'm just going to lay this right in the general place or right on top of in some cases where the other weft was. I'm just going to sew it in. Now, ideally you want to use thread that is the same color as uh, the hair or the wig cap. In this case, I don't have any. And this will be just fine. It's brownish. I mean, don't use white. Um, also, because these wet these wefts here are thicker than the original wefts, um, I get a little leeway, and I'm just going to slide that needle underneath. I can feel that it's going through the wig cap, and because it is a thicker weft, sometimes I can't pull the needle out. Now, of course, there's special sewing thread for this, but she's not human, so I don't need to worry about that. And there are special needles for this. They're loops down needles, but I don't need to worry about that either. I think they're mattress stitching needles. I can't remember what they're called, but I've had them. I'm not going to worry about that either. This works just fine. It's just a regular sharp needle. And I am stitching this under in such a way that very little of the thread is even going to show could whip stitches I could even machine stitch it but that's not necessary I got a little pucker here so I just want to go back pull that flat not even gonna see that little tiny dot sometimes I get them really good and you see nothing at all it depends on how careful I am But I mean, like I said, they, you could, I'm not selling this. No one's going to see it but me. This is kind of quick and dirty. But there's all kind of ways I could do this so that you don't see any of the seam at all. Like any of the thread at all. For the most part, you don't see any of it. Okay, let me see. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's enough to hold it on. I'm not holding it on for child, child's play, so I think I need to worry about tacking it. I'm just folding it over. I'm trying to make sure when I fold it over that I don't fold the wig edge, you know. Just enough. Hold that really tight. And I'm going to go ahead and punch that through. Now it's to the other side. There we go. your edge so I'm pulling it through and that's because I don't have a thimble 
Okay, see, that's just a few stitches. It doesn't have to be really tight on there because no one's going to touch this but me. And eventually, I'm going to send her in to get those eyes done. Okay, that didn't go through the wig cap, so I'm pulling it back out. I'm going to put this in here. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm going to tack this on here. A little more than I need it, but it's always better to have a little more than too much. Or a little more than not enough, I should say. There we go. All right. And that's basically how you put a weft on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here she is. She's still shiny because I tried some of everything to get those eyes unstuck. And then so I had to moisturize her vinyl after. Uh, well, there was a lot. At any rate, here she is. Just need to tighten her limbs. But as you can see, this is how the wig turned out, which honestly is not too bad. Oh, I'm losing her hair. She definitely needs to be tightened. And so uh, it's just about knee length. The wefts were longer, but I had them cut. Not by me. I just want to make sure you know that. Uh, and this color, sorry. <laughs> It's crazy when you can't get a doll to stand up, just all kind of thing happen. Okay, so anyway, um, this color is kind of like a coppery auburn. It's not as red as Felicity's hair. Um, and I can't compare it to anybody else because I've never seen any of the other red heads like Sage or anything like that. But um, it's definitely um, more brassy than or maybe, yeah, maybe more brassy. Or, no, no, I think I want to say more copper than her original color. So she's now a redhead. I think it goes well with her tones. And actually, the red hair makes her look a little lighter in skin tone than she originally did with the Kanani wig. Uh, let me see if I can get you a good difference, whether it'll show up or not on this phone. Uh, so I left the... Hairs in between. Okay, yeah, you can kind of see that. Oh, that didn't help at all. What You can kind of see that. Let's change the lights around here. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference to you. It's from where I'm looking at, it makes a difference to me. Like you can see over here, this is more copperish. And this here is more brown and kind of brassy. I think maybe that's how I want to describe it. So I did not change the short hairs yet. And I don't know if I'm going to change the short hairs. Because this is kind of a temporary solution. Uh, especially because the eyes are so wonky. I have every intention of sending her in to American Girl at some point. And she does have this scratch on her nose which let me turn her around just scratch on her nose which i really don't want to deal with it's going to involve let me see okay yeah there you go it's actually several gashes it's going to involve some micro mesh which i probably don't want to fool around with right now i'm going to go ahead and repaint her lips though and just buff her out a bit she'll be fine the way she is for now, she'll take some good pictures for the time being until I decide that I'm going to send her in and get her completely done over. Okay, now, American Girl has a policy that dolls that have been heavily changed or heavily customized, they won't do any work on. So uh, there's a lot of the original wig still inside this wig cap. Um, but they're basically the hair was shedding out. So as pretty much as I brushed it, 
it just fell out and clumped. So I'm just going to uh, send it in with all the clumps of hair and this wig cap. And uh, that's what I'll do when it comes time to get her done. And I don't really, you know, when I redo my dolls, I retouch them. I don't make them over so she won't be, you know, very heavily uh, customized. It'll just be the little lip, lip uh, gee, a little lip paint, who did not have her coffee this week, and a little something on the cheeks, which came off when I was doing the cleaning. I was thinking about calling this one Kanoa. I didn't know if I want to stick with a K name. Uh, when... I have multiples of a face mold when they're like the truly me's and stuff because I had a multiple Sammy Samantha was two Samantha. So one is Samantha and one is Samson. I have two Addies. So we have one is Addie and the other one is Adara. And so I've been giving them matching leather names. And so since I have a Kanani, I figured I would give her a K name. So I looked up some Hawaiian K names and Kanoa means free spirit. And since she has a different red hair than Kanani and basically I almost got her for free. I thought that was a good name for her. She's, she's her own. She's not a, a second Kanani. She's Kanoa and she is kind of a free spirit. Oh, but I'm glad it turned out pretty decently. I mean, it's a, it was a pretty decent job. <laughs> and so I'm really pleased with it. Okay. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers who are still watching, even though I'm doing dolls. I will be back with fiber vid videos soon. The tin and ice is going well. So I do plan on putting out some beginning spinning videos on YouTube and through a teachable class, teachable.com. I will let you know the information about that. So just stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.